What's up, guys? Red Bud provided a lot of excitement in the 450 class for sure. Unfortunately, one guy who was not there was Jet Lawrence. And obviously, as you saw in some in a prior video, it was revealed that I, I had given my two cents on it. But Jet Lawrence announced he is out for the final half of the motocross season. So anyway, I'm not going to talk about that anymore. But still, you guys, I want to thank you all for subscribing. Before I get to this, I want to thank you all for subscribing. I just hit 11,000 subscribers. And I hope to uh, keep things going. And now my goal now is to make it to 12. So hopefully that won't take me very long. But I'll get them. I like to think I keep earning subscribers. And and speaking of which, if you haven't subscribed, please, please do so. I appreciate it. If you think I'm worth listening to or you just want to see some more of my games, some of my uh, game show games or any of my other uh, – other uh, Jeopardy games that I plan to uh, film in the future. But in the meantime, subscribe. Let's get into this. Here comes my banner. Chase sex and sweeps. Hunter Lawrence crashes hard. In that first moto, Hunter Lawrence had crashed very hard to a point where he may have been showing the symptoms of a concussion. Now, here's the thing. Now, Chase Saxon going 1-1, getting his first win since uh, Hangtown, that didn't come as a surprise to me. But the fact that he hadn't won at Red Bud before, when that's the closest to his, to a local race for him, that actually was a bit of a surprise to me. But but then again, Chase Sexton, you know, you, know, you really can't bet on him to uh, win at every single event. I mean, obviously, Eli Tomac's not out there. Ken Rotson isn't out there. Cooper Webb's not out there. But I don't care. I, and I don't think that really should matter. A win is a win no matter who's out there. And especially if Jet Lawrence is not out there himself. And uh, so good on Chase to get his second win of the season. I have to admit, though, that I was thinking that Chase Sexton had this title, that this was his title to lose now based on experience alone. Because obviously, when you look at who's been in the 450 class longer, Chase Sexton gets the nod. Hunter Lawrence, this is his first year in the 450 full-time. And how many times had he rode the 450 in motocross before he won the 250 title in, in the East in 23? None. So, obviously, so obviously, I think Hunter is still going through a learning curve. And maybe Jet is as well, but Jet is certainly up until it was announced that he was out for the season. Jet Lawrence was proving that he was either one or two steps ahead of everybody because he never really went through uh, that kind of learning of of learning the ropes per se. You know where you always where you hear some people say that uh, oh that oh when it comes a little too easy too quick for you. Somewhere down the line, you're going to have to pay a price. And I think that Jet is going through the same kind of thing that Ryan Dungey did in 2010, where Dungey, he won both the Supercross and Motocross titles in his rookie year in the 450 class in 2010. And then he went to winning just one Supercross in 2011 and finishing third in the final standings. Just a few points behind Chad Reed and eventual champ Ryan Villapoto. Well, something tells me that Jet Lawrence has faced his first form of adversity of this capacity, okay? So maybe this is the best thing to happen to him, and, and Jet is not going through a phase of too easy, too quick. Hunter Lawrence, he when he first turned pro, he had to really learn some stuff. He had a lot, he had a, Pretty pretty steep learning curve, but I think he was getting the, the gist of things until that first moto when he crashed. And for Hunter Lawrence to have to show symptoms of a concussion, one wonders if that may have been Hunter Lawrence's last go around in 2024 alone. Because you just never know. 
I mean, concussions are really unpredictable. And, of course, if Hunter Lawrence goes through concussion protocol, there's a chance we could – there's a chance we may not see Hunter at Spring Creek. And that could very well determine the scope of the championship because if Hunter's not there, this is pretty much Chase Sexton's title to lose, and he's probably probably going to win out the rest of the season unless somebody steps up and does what he did and tries to beat him. You know, like what's what Chase did when he tried to beat Eli Tomac in 2022. And I was pulling for Sexton too, because Chase was showing that he was not faced by anything. And despite he did make some rookie mistakes, he proved he could beat Eli Tomac. And he did at Washougal. So something tells me that unless – Hunter may have crashed himself out of the series eventually. This is Chase Sexton's title to lose. And I thought this was his to lose alone based on experience. Because Sexton has been in the 450 class since 2020 in motocross. Okay, And Chase, I thought he was going to go through some learning curves. And it w- and for a while he did. And, f- and of course he does deal with the with the hard crashes every now and then. But still, Chase, I think, has been making some leaps and bounds, especially with the switch to KTM after a lot after pretty much a lifetime career on Hondas. Now, obviously, Chase, I don't know. I mean, if he thinks that he's gonna win this title, he certainly the ball is certainly in his court. Not gonna lie to you. And if that last to first ride at, at Hangtown was any indication. Sexton has just established himself as the man to beat. And the only guy who can probably come up and maybe rattle his cage at all is Eli Tomac. And we're not going to see him until Bud's Creek. I don't know if I would really put Cooper Webb in that title, in that uh, equation, but wouldn't be a bad idea to do so. But as for Hunter Lawrence, something tells me that if Hunter has a concussion that could be it for his year are we going to see him in super duper i don't know i like to think so but you never know and i'll tell you this if they took concussions the if they had a concussion protocol like how they do for nfl if they did that back in the day and back in the early 2000s Travis Pastrana would probably still have a racing career today or maybe be on the, uh, on the precipice of retirement, perhaps. I don't know, but that's just what I think. So, you know, I thought that was a great ride by both gentlemen, uh, Sexton and Hunter Lawrence. And something tells, and like I said earlier, something tells me that Chase Sexton is now the man to beat for this title. And the only guy who can really rattle his cage is Eli Tomac. Obviously, we won't see Jet Lawrence anymore this summer. We probably won't see him until uh, SMX. That is a that's his uh, aimed date. And definitely, don't rush coming back. I mean, me personally, I never had a I never had a thumb injury myself. I've been fortunate myself to have only one injury related to motocross, and that was a dislocated shoulder in 2009. And unfortunately, that accident that I had could very well have been prevented because there was about 15 people on the side of the track that I was riding at, and nobody even thought to to come out onto the track and tell, tell guys to slow down because there was a guy down in my blind section, and by the time I saw it, it was too late, and I plowed it, and I plowed into someone. Okay. But anyway, as far as Jet Lawrence goes, I kind of thought that that for a guy who's hurt, he was certainly proving a lot of the a lot of the critics wrong. And something told me that he was going to come back and retake the points lead and maybe make it back-to-back titles. And uh in motocross anyway. And maybe make it eight titles in a row when you look at the long streak of titles that he was racking up at such a young age. Unfortunately, that ain't going to happen anymore. 
So obviously, so obviously, Jet heal up. And uh, I guess that's about it for this one. But I want to also clarify something else that I didn't that I neglected to mention in my 250 video, and that was the ludicrous penalty that Chance Hymas got after the first 250 moto. And I thought that penalty was really, really stupid. Not going to lie to you. Because if you're going to dock Ch Chance Hymas five points for jumping on a red cross flag and not dock him any positions and just dock him five championship points and no points on the day, I'm sorry. That's a penalty that does not sit well. That does not sit well with me. You either you either dock in positions and the points, or you just you you either you either do that or just come up with another alternative, but not dock Chance Hymas five championship points and let Hayden Deegan keep his lead. Because really. And you got to admit that if Chance Hymas had those five points docked and maybe even those two positions docked or what that accounted to, because I think it's 25 for a win, 22, and then 20. And then after that, so you either docked Chance Hymas two positions and the five points or might as well just, or you may as well just turn a blind eye, really, because that's a ridiculous penalty, and I think it's really dumb for them to, for the AMA to, pen, to penalize points and not positions on on infractions like that. I can remember when Dylan Ferrandez was docked one point for the same infraction, and Ken Roxon was docked two points for the same infraction because he jumped farther, and it was at Red Bud, ironically. I think this might have been 2021 when Ferrandis won the championship. In fact, I think it was that, you know. In fact, I think it was 2021 now that I think about it. So really, and like I said in that video, if Duke Finch saw, if Duke Finch was still the AMA head referee and he saw how that was being handled, he'd be puking his lungs out, let me tell you. And, you know, that's really where I'm going to leave it. So. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And remember, subscribe if you think I'm worth listening to. I want to get to 12,000 subscribers now. Hopefully, it won't take me long. But anyway, thank you for 11,000 subscribers. And I hope to make it to 12 soon. So thanks, guys. Subscribe. And we'll catch you all later when we head to Spring Creek.